The best way to avoid the most common mistakes and problems that I see with my student and client director projects is to carefully manage the resources that go into your director movies as work on the project progresses. This is particularly true with linked files and media. Good testing practices can also help you discover problems early in the project while they're still small and easily fixed. So let me devote several movies here to addressing these two very important topics, managing and testing your director projects. To start, let's go over some guidelines and practices that I require all of my students and clients to follow on all of their director projects. These seem to help make these projects proceed as smooth as possible. Number one, before you begin a project, plan where your media should be located when you deploy your movie and replicate that organization at the beginning of your project. Let me repeat that for emphasis. Plan where your media should be located and then replicate that organization from the very, very beginning. This prevents the links between your director movies and any external media files from being broken when you move the project to a different location on a disk or to a different disk volume or perhaps you're uploading it to a web host. This here is a pretty good structure for a simple project. Have a project directory inside of which is your director movie. If you're using movies in a window, you'll also place those other director files here in the project directory. This should contain a media subdirectory which contains your sound files, graphics files, and any digital video files. The key here is that when you move the project, move the entire directory so that this subdirectory gets moved and the relationship between your director movies and the linked media files stays the same. Tip number two is that when you work on a large project, plan your basic approach to all aspects of the movie before you start construction. This way you can find problems with your strategies before you've invested a lot of time building on them. One thing to do in the beginning of a project is to use placeholder media. This will be used to work up prototypes and mock-ups and these will show you right away if you have any problems with your approach. Finding problems early in a project makes them much easier to solve. If you wait until you start building, until the final media is ready, it's already probably too late. My next tip is to organize your cast members in a logical way. You might choose to group all the cast members of a particular type together, or you might choose to group the cast members from each scene together. Whatever you do, choose a system that works for you and that will make it easy to find cast members when your cast becomes large. You can also choose to keep groups of cast members in separate casts. You can always go to File, New, create a new cast, for example, for all these grape pictures or perhaps for all of your audio files. Here this student organized all their text elements together, their grape pictures. Here's two audio files grouped together and then these two buttons are grouped together. Then down here you have some behavior. So whatever works for you, but you want to be able to find things easily and quickly as your cast files grow and get more complex. My next tip is to use meaningful names in your scripts. Use the name of the cast member, sprite, or frame marker when referring to these items in scripts. This avoids the need to change your code if you need to rearrange cast members, sprites, or frames during a project which happens all the time continuously. Here's some examples. Here you have a member, a text member, that's going to contain the text. Planning is the key to easy director projects. Better to name it like this, member output text dot text equals then then the text that goes into the member. This way you're labeling the text cast member making it easy to identify in the script. Here's another example. Here this sprite one, this is referring to a sprite by its number. Better instead to refer to a sprite here by its name. So if you do move the sprite out of position one, the script won't break. Here's yet another example of poor labeling in a script. Here you're telling the movie playback head to go to frame 27. Better put a close print there. Instead, you want to use markers, frame markers. That way, if you do move things around your score, all you have to do is move the, the marker rather than rewrite the script right here. So the rule to follow here is always navigate to frame markers and not frame numbers. 
And my last tip is to save your movie files often and save them with sequential numbering patterns, for example, file 1A, 1B, 1C, 2A, 2B, 2C. Save a copy of the movie after each milestone, such as a day of work or after adding a lot of new features or sections. This way, if problems arise, you can easily compare the current version of the file, let's say 4C, to a slightly older version, such as 4A or maybe 3R, to locate the source of the problem. Keep several copies of your file at different stages of development in case you need to go back several steps. For example, you might want to save 3A, D, E, G, and R, and also maybe several 4s and several 5s, and get rid of the 6s completely, but keep some files 7As and Bs and Cs, for example. Let me now move on to the next movie and review some techniques for testing movies and testing early and testing often to avoid problems.